Hey, how's it going? Back to another video here. So I made a video a few months ago. I don't know if you can see that. Where uh, I revived a Milwaukee M12 6 amp hour battery. Um, well, it's doing it again. In fact, I had it doing it to all my 6 amp hour batteries. So I think it is a problem with the 6 amp hour battery. I haven't had this problem with my 3, 4, 2.5, 1.5, 2.0. You get the picture. It just seems to be a 6.0 battery. So we're going to go ahead and revive this one again. Um, but I want to try something different. Last time it took quite a while. Um, so I got a couple things I want to do here. First of all, I bought the cheapest multimeter I could find on Amazon, this seven-function digital multimeter. So we'll review this. I wanted a multimeter that uh, this was less than ten bucks, one that I could just keep on the boat, um, you know, in case I have electrical problems on the boat, and uh, you know, just something I don't care if it gets damaged, gets wet, whatever. I mean, it. Uh, I said I'll post a link to it down below. But uh, let's see it. Oh, it comes with batteries. It takes a 9-volt battery, um, but it comes with batteries. All right. So it comes with some leads. It feels real cheap in the hand, real plasticky and like you got at the dollar store. But hey, it was basically not much more than a dollar for a multimeter, so not bad. So we're going to be measuring some voltage here. So we'll plug the red into the volts, and we'll plug the black into the common. So let's take a look at it. So it has DC volts, goes from 200 millivolts all the way up to 250. And then uh, resistance, it has uh, 200 all the way up to 2,000 kilo ohms. Um, has AC voltage. And then it also has a diode checker. And then it has some amperage um, from microamps all the way up to 200 milliamps. Uh, it has a 5 amp range. Uh, HFE, that is for your um, checking gain on your um, transistor. It has a transistor checker. And, uh, yeah, diode checker. So we'll, um, let's see what we can do here. Let's, uh, well, let's switch it on first. And we'll go to DC volts. We'll switch it to 20. Uh, we're going to see what's going on with this battery here. Um, I use these little spade connectors, these automotive spade connectors. And we'll stick it down in there. Now we can just measure the voltage. Now normally it measures about, uh, what was it measured? About 13, 12.9, something like that. And we're getting 10.92. And this has been sitting on the charger flashing for a couple hours, but 10.92. Let's, uh, let's check all of our cell voltages here. We're at 397. That's not bad. We're at 303. That's not very good. And finally, we're at 383. Yeah, so we got a we got one cell in there that's the problem. Uh, let's see. Let's just check resistance here. Let's see how it does on resistance. So I just got a little breadboard set up. Uh, a couple resistors there. You can kind of see just just to check, see how this thing does. So we'll set it uh, here, so you can see. All right, here we go. Let's check the resistance. So for a 100 ohm resistor, we're getting, if I can keep my hand steady, getting 100.7, 100.6, something like that. So anyway, that, that, uh, that works, and this one I think is a 220k ohm resistor. Let's see what we got here. Can't remember what this one was. Yep, 220K. Oops, we'll go back there. Put the 20K setting. Yeah, so 2.16. That's pretty close, 2.15. So that's fairly close. Uh, this one has a transistor checker. It's mostly a gimmick, but if you wanted to check... Uh, 
It's got NPN and PNP. This one here is a... can't see. This one is a PNP. So we'll just put in there. Should read about 100. Or 200, sorry. Now we got 216. And then I think I got a NPN here. Yeah, here's an NPN. This one should read about 100. 113. Yeah, so it's just a way of checking gain, see if your transistor is blown. Uh, people use it, not really. But uh, yeah, so that's what we got there. And then we uh, set it back to voltage. And one of the things I want to try, last time I uh, remember the video from a few months back, I made this little chart, or this little basic diagram that showed all the points and what my voltages were. And again, this same battery, we were at, I think, 308 on this one, and now we're at 323. Um, so I want to try something different. Um, it, it, we can do it. We know we can do it battery to battery. As a matter of fact, I just did it with this battery. I used a two amp hour battery and it took a long time. It took probably 45 minutes to an hour. Um, here, what I'm going to do, let me just get this cord out of the way. So here what we're going to do is I bought this cheap, um, tack life DC power supply. So the reason why I bought this was I wanted a variable DC power supply so I can power a, uh, like a bilge pump for um, for um, you know doing sluice boxes and stuff like that. And also I do some electronics work. My daughter's in robotics. We do some Arduino stuff. So I just wanted a steady, clean DC uh, power supply. This one's pretty good. Um, it's got an on-off switch in the back. We'll turn it on there. We'll dial this down to 12 volts. It's got both coarse and fine adjustments. And then uh, we'll take down the amperage. Probably, we'll go with two and a half amps, give or take. And then we're gonna, we're gonna plug in here. I'm gonna charge it like that. And you can check to see what the output is. So it's outputting 11 volts, we'll kick it up a notch. And uh, two and a half amps of current. So we're gonna see what this does. And uh, we'll check back in a few minutes. I want to see if this is faster. All right, so we're back. I, uh, I've been checking the voltage every few minutes. Uh, I did dial down the current a little bit and dialed down the voltage um, just because I didn't want to overcharge any of the cells. But let's take a look. We'll turn this thing off. And let's see where we're at here. Grab our cheap multimeter. Oops, I don't know why I took those out. Well, let's see what our voltage is for the battery. We started at, uh, I think, about 10 and a half volts. So here we are. And we are at 12.23. That's not bad. Let's check our cell one. Cell 1 is 4.36. Let's check cell 2. And that was our problem cell. Well, we're back up to 3.6766. And cell 3 is 4.14. So did it work? It sure did. Uh, you know, if you're out in the field and all you have is another 6 amp hour battery or another, you know, M12 battery, you can hook them up and you can charge each individual cell. Um, you know, we did that before and it worked. Uh, or if you got a, if you're lazy and impatient like me, you just grab yourself a 12 volt power supply and, uh, and charge it up. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let that sit on the charger and see what happens and see if we can get all those cells up. Now I'll probably need to go back and, uh, and do just that, that cell two that was the problem. I'll put this on about five volts. Uh, maybe just an amp of current, uh, and just do that one cell, see if I can bring that up in the four range. But yeah, I definitely think it's a good alternative. As far as the multimeter goes, you know, it's right on the money for DC voltage. Resistance check, eh, you know, good for course work. It'll get you in the ballpark. 
transistor checker, you know, it, it uh, works-ish if you're going to use that kind of thing. Most people are just going to measure voltage and resistance uh, with these things. I don't know if I would use this for AC voltage. just doesn't seem very, very skookum to me. So, But, uh, yeah, I think this is a great option if you're just getting started out in electronics or you just tinker around the house occasionally. Maybe you just have a project or you just want to see if a wire is hot. Um, you know, this will certainly do the trick. Um, but, yeah, I think this is good for, for putting in the boat. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. And as always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.